there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got a lot of DIY home decor crafts for you today. I'm also joining in with a sweet friend of mine. And of course, I'll show you those. There's always a blooper. <laughs> Let's try for round two. Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got some fun DIY home decor crafts for you today. I'll be joining in with a sweet friend of mine. I, of course, will share those details with the little... And there I did it again. Okay, okay, we got this, we got this. Round three, because you're ready to hear this, aren't you? <laughs> Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got some fun DIY home decor crafts for you today. I'm also joining in with a sweet friend of mine and I of course will share those details with you just a little bit later on. What are we waiting for? Let's get started. We did it. Today we're gonna be working on some rustic farmhouse fabric Christmas crafts. So let's get started with project number one. For this project today, we're going to be using this red and white stripe ticking fabric you get from Walmart. It's one piece. It's folded in half. And then what you're going to do is just create a pattern for yourself. It's really easy. I know you can do it. 23 inches long, 10 and a half inches wide. That's it. A rectangle. You're going to place one long end on the fold of your fabric here. And then you're going to cut out those other, you know, three and a quarter sizes, you're going to end up with one big piece folded in half here, just like this. Now you're going to make a circle pattern seven inches in diameter. Basically, pin that to your fabric and cut it out. I didn't make a printable for these because I think you guys can do these ones. All right, so you end your one piece and your circle piece. You can use Beacon Fabri-Tac glue or your glue gun. So for a gluing option, those of you gluers, this is part one. You're going to turn your fabric right side together. Basically, just fold it in the other direction. You're going to glue along the long edge just like that. That's it for now. Nice and easy. You're going to glue about a half inch down. So I'm calling this, it's a half inch seam allowance. So on your ruler... Mark down here and look at a half inch down. That's where you're going to place your glue, okay? We need this to be a half inch down so that it fits our circle properly later, okay? Now, for those of your sewers, this is your sewing option part one. You're just going to pin that one long side that's, you know, obviously not connected. And you're going to take it to the sewing machine and you're going to sew down that one long side. Again, a half inch seam allowance, okay? I've devised this so it just fits that circle hat, nice and easy. Okay, now all of us are together. We're gonna hook that circle to one end of our hat, one short end of our hat, pick any end you want. Try and match your stripes at first, right sides together, so the nice piece of fabric's together. And we're going to start pinning this circle to the short end of our hat. And when you're pinning the short end of your hat, as you're pinning it, you're kind of how do I say it? You're kind of stretching your fabric to go in the direction of the circle. See how I'm kind of pulling it down and it's giving me a rounded edge so it's staying kind of in that circle shape as we're pinning it to the circle. Do you understand what I'm saying? So make sure you're kind of putting your fabric around and you're kind of bending it into the circle shape as you pin it to that circle so i hope that's understandable might be easier you know more said than done so just skipping ahead a little bit you can see how it's starting to look here all the way around again i'm still kind of bending and flexing the straight end of that fabric into the circle shape as we pin it to the circle shape and then i want to show you here what it looks like when we're almost all the way pinned you can see that it's got a nice circle shape going all the way around now probably what's going to happen is you get to the end i i left this part in for you. you're going to find you might have a little bit of excess material left there's two ways to go about it you can just pleat it there and leave it because it will get covered up or what you can do is turn it this way turn your fabric this way and kind of take that straight edge and pull it up about a half inch higher than the circle in the center when you do that it kind of straightens out your fabric there so i hope that's understandable and then go ahead and pin it to your circle if it's not understandable just put that pleat in there and just sew across that pleat again it will get covered up but you can see here how that fabric's up a little higher than the actual circle in the center and this is what it looks like that we've got 
So let's move back to our gluers. Here's your option, part two. What you're going to do, the way I suggest to glue this, is start anywhere and remove one pin and add your glue. Okay? And then go to the next pin, pull it out, add your glue. Next pin, pull it out, add your glue. And you're going to continue that process all the way around until you've run out of pins. For our sewers, here's our option part two. Basically, you're going to take this to the sewing machine nice and easy. I'm just kind of leaving this in here so you can see it. And you're going to sew all the way around. Quarter inch, half inch down, doesn't really matter, just as long as you get this sewn on here. And if you're finding, as you can see here, I'm kind of pulling on the fabric to keep it straight as I go around so that I don't get any pleats. But if you find it's easier just to kind of leave those little bit of pleats in there as you're sewing or whatever, or you're not that experienced, again, it's going to be perfectly okay because I promise we will cover it up and you won't even notice it. All right? All right. Once everybody is done sewing or gluing, go ahead and turn your fabric right side out. And you can see our bottoms on here all nice and good. I'll show you how it looks here in just a second once I get it straightened out just like this. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that circle pattern again and you're going to trace it onto some like cardboard something kind of stiff okay and it's a little bit too big now because we've sewn our fabric pieces together so we're coming in about a half inch in and we're redrawing our new circle pattern so it was a seven inch diameter now it's about a six and a half inch diameter right go ahead and cut that out now you could skip this part but i wanted something a little bit more sturdier for the bottom of our fabric piece here once that's cut out fit it right on the bottom that way it's like i said nice and sturdy and stiff now let's skip to we want to make a little brim around our hat these are the different fabrics you can choose all of them are from walmart there's a fluffy fleece that is a batting here's another kind of skinnier fleece you can choose whatever you can find to use i'm going to use this fluffier fleece and i'm going to cut a four inch wide strip all the way along one end um and i don't know exact length you need it i'm just cutting a four inch strip right now let's put that aside next thing we're going to need is some rocks we've done this before in some other videos right put some in a little baggie here and these rocks i got a bag at dollar tree set that aside we're coming back to our little brim here here's where you'll just kind of put it around the bottom of your hat there and you know cut it to fit your size okay Okay, and then laying that aside, now we're going to put a tiny bit of stuffing on top of that cardboard. I know I'm back and forth. It's the way I filmed, you guys. Sorry about that. Tiny bit of stuffing so that it kind of adds a little stuffing right underneath our rocks. So you add your little bit of stuffing, your rocks on top, and then you're going to begin to stuff your hat even more. You're going to fill it up quite a ways here. I'll show you, give you a sneak peek. I think I did about six inches of just full really nice and tight stuffing at the bottom above that rock stuffing it and make sure i'm encasing those rocks and stuffing so no one can feel it yeah so here's what it looks like about a good six inches of good complete stuffing and then from there on you're going to just use really light light stuffing uh in the rest of the hat just a little bit just to give it some fluff Okay, next step, we're back to our brim here. And all I'm doing, because of the fabric I'm using, probably on any of the ones you choose, whatever fleece you choose or batting, I'm just going ahead and I'm gluing down the edges so it looks nice and finished off. If you're a sewer, you could go ahead and sew this if you want to, but, you know, I'm finding it easier just to glue. And then once that's set up, we're going to stain this a little bit. What I've got here, this is just some leftover coffee I had in the morning, and I added some vanilla in it. And what I'm doing is just spritzing this on, on top. It's just going to, you can do as heavy or as light as you want. And then I'm going to just kind of blot it off. And then you can see just that little bit of staining there, right? And then I'm going to come in and do the same thing on the hat. I'm just going to add a little bit of staining on here just to give it a little something, something. It's quick, it's easy, and it works. Once you get that done, everything's ready to go. Then we're going to put our, our little fur decoration around you know the brim of our hat and i'm making sure the bottom as i set it up that the fur is touching the table at that bottom edge right there okay just so that you don't see the underneath of that you know stripedness we want the fur brim or whatever to be seen first and then the stripe of the hat can come all the way up mm -hmm. hope that's understandable as i come to the end before i kind of get right to the end i'm going to kind of take this here and i'm just going to fold it in to make it nice and finished off so i'm going to glue that inward that cut end 
and then I'll go ahead and glue that end down. And I'm making sure that this seam, that's just my taste, matches the seam where we sewed on the hat fabric itself, okay? Now I'm coming in, this is by choice, and I'm just pulling on the threads of the open end of our hat just to kind of give it a distressed look. This is what it'll look like all the way around. And then once you get there, about four inches up from that open end, I'm just adding some really thick twine here that I get from Walmart. Um, and I'm making sure that I do the bow kind of to the side because I'll show you here, this hat is going to sit upright, right? It's going to sit on that flat end. So as it folds down this way, I want to make sure that bow is kind of hanging off to the side there. All right, so once I get that where I want it, I change my view for you. I'm coming in because I want wrinkles in my hat, right? So I'm just kind of using my Fabri-Tac glue and I'm creating wrinkles where I want it to fold adding glue here and there so it just stays in that position. And then I'll use some straight pins here and I will you know, pin everything together until that glue dries and that way we have permanent wrinkles. So you know, fluff and fold how you want those wrinkles to turn out, glue it and pin it. Now I've just got some bells for my supply here and um, I'm just gonna go ahead and add them onto the hat and I'm kind of adding them not on the direct front of the hat. I know the way this is laying, it looks like the direct front, but it's not. It's kind of a little bit to the right side of the hat, okay? And I'm adding in just some different greenery and stuff here right at the end of those bells so it kind of covers up that cut end of the bells. Okay, you'll see it in the final looks how it kind of just sets offset. You could put right in the center if you want. I just wanted mine offset to the right a little bit. Adding in bunch of different you know greenery some with some little red berries to kind of bring out the red in the hat a little bit here perfect and then i'm adding in these are some little glittery uh red colored pine cones i got at fall season at joann's and then I've got some wire here. I kind of curled around a paintbrush. The twisty wire and some of the bells and the rusty star I'll be using. I'll have a link down below where I got those. Adding in some pine cones here. You can arrange this however you want with whatever greenery you want and pine cones, things like that. I've got wood ornament. You can get a little box of wood ornaments at Walmart and I'm just tying that around a red and white twine bow. The twine comes from Dollar Tree. And then these Recollections clickable stamps. Uh, you can get it at Michael's. Again, thank you, Jen, who's Mother Time here on YouTube. I love these stamps. I can only put two ho-hos at a time, and then I have to add a third ho-ho by itself. And I've taken some fabric, and, you know, I ripped fabric, and I sewed around it on my sewing machine. That's what I've got it on there. And then I'm deciding where I want that to lay. I'm going to glue right in the middle of that ensemble and then glue that rusty star right in the middle of it. Again, that link will be down below for the rusty star. And then that'll kind of cover up the edge of that little fabric tag there and then I'll kind of glue that little fabric tag into position and then I've got some big rusty bells here I'll show you that later in the third project what they look like but they do come from Joann's and I'll put it right down at the end of that hat and that big bow that part got cut off sorry about that and then off camera I'm going to use it spray adhesive and then just kind of you know sprinkle pumpkin pie over the adhesive and then I'm going to use the spray glitter that I pick up at Walmart and I'm going to spray that around it and once that's done I love this project and I hope you like it too So let's see who I'm teaming up with today. You all are going to be, there it is. I knew it. You're all going to be excited just as I am. My sweet friend and sister in Jesus Christ, Wendy, whose YouTube channel is White Sparrow Living Luke 12, 6. Now we have collaborated before. I'm sure we'll collaborate again. We are just kindred spirits and sisters in Christ. I have said it many times. I just love her. I love her zest for life. She's so infectious. She creates beautiful and amazing crafts, just as this one that was in one of her last videos. 
simple yet makes a statement I love it. Sometimes though, she comes up with those projects. I'd love to just kind of open her brain just a little bit, kind of take a peek inside, see what she's thinking about these crafts and get a little bit of that inspiration for myself. You are going to love what I'm going to show you next. A few sneak peeks of projects she's got in store for you today. Oh, Make sure you check her out. The link is going to be in my description box. I was speechless for a moment. Link will be in my description box. Make sure after you watch my video, you go check her out. I love her, and I hope you like her too. With that said, let's move on to project number two. For this project, I do have a free printable for you, two pages. This is going to be a snowman. This is the lower half of the snowman body. You can see the bottom and the top, and this is the upper half of the snowman body, bottom and top. Basically, you're going to cut those out. You're going to tape it together at the dotted line to get your one snowman body. You're going to cut two out of your material. This is what it would look like when you cut it out. Okay, I'm using batting from Walmart. You all know I like to use that. I'm going to flip it right side out. There is kind of a fuzzy side and a less fuzzy side, so I'm putting the less fuzzy side out. So for you gluers, here's your option. Part one, you can use Fabri-Tac or hot glue just in the last project and in the next project. You're going to pin off a nice large area on the head portion there, and with your glue of choice, you're just going to start gluing all the way around the snowman body, stopping kind of at those pin marks or if you don't pin it just make sure you stop about a little three inch opening there and then kind of make sure you come down and around the other side again leaving that opening at the top for sewers of course here's your first part one you're going to do exactly as i showed now how to glue you're going to sew that portion Seam allowance doesn't matter here, gluing or sewing, as in the last project, you know, we had to have a half hour or half hour, <laughs> a half inch seam allowance. I just laugh at myself. We're going to keep going. Um, I think I did about a quarter inch seam allowance here, but really it doesn't matter on this one. Okay, we're back to gluing part two. Once you've done your gluing, make sure you turn your project right side out. And we're going to, you've kind of got little rounded edges at the bottom here. We're going to make this so it'll sit flat upright. So at your two kind of rounded ends there, you're going to take and kind of tuck those in a little bit so you have a little recess and you're going to glue it on that side, tuck it in, little recess, glue it on the other side and pinch where you have your gluing seams together. I'm going to pin it here to make like I glued it, pinch both ends, seams together, add your glue, pinch, okay, and then you're going to turn it back. This is what you should look like once it's glued and then you're going to turn it back to inside out again. And those little points that you have where you glued, you're going to glue those and tuck those little points in just like that and glue it down. Okay, we've done this enough, so hopefully it's understandable. Our sewing people, this is your part two. Our thing is inside out and we're going to just pull it apart to kind of form a little rounded point and pin it about an inch down or so, half inch down actually. Both sides, pin it just like that. And then we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to sew just straight across there, like where we have pinned it at. I usually pull my pins out and then, you know, sew it. So this is what it's going to look like here. Do one side. We're going to flip it around and do the other side. Same thing. Pull your pin out, sew it or leave your pin in, sew above it, whatever you want. This is what both sides look like. And then we're going to, since we're already inside out, we're just going to add glue on those two little points above where we sewed. And then we're going to fold those in. Again, We've this is like our third video doing this, right? Those who've been with me a while, so you should know how to do this by now. I'm going to go ahead and pin those down while the glue sets up. Perfect, nice and easy, just like that. We've got this. Now we're on the same page. Once everyone's done, make sure you turn your snowman back right side out. This is what your bottom should look like. So it'll stand upright when we stuff it and add some rocks. And so now you're going to add a little bit of stuffing here at the bottom, just a tiny bit. We're going to bring in the little baggie of rocks again. Again, you can get those from Dollar Tree. Add that on your stuffing. You want just a little layer down there. And then go to start stuffing around your rocks. 
I like to stuff around the rocks so that it cushions it. So when I sell these at craft shows, people don't feel the rocks there. It feels all nice and soft. Stuff it clear to the top. And I know this looks creepy here, but stuff it clear to the top. And then if you want, you can go ahead and glue that closed. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of take a needle and thread and hand sew it closed. It's a big opening, but all of it will get covered. So no worries there. I know that looks kind of creepy with that little head stuffed <laughs> when you get the stuffing all the way to the top. Sorry about that. This is a cute little snowman, I promise. <laughs> all right, once that's done, this is kind of what it'll look like, all sewn or glued. So, so for our next part, we're going to use the Santa hat from the pattern where we made that full tall Santa. I'll put the link in the description box uh, to that video if you missed it and the printable. And this is on page one of that three page printable that's the exact hat we're going to use or you can just freehand a long hat i think this is probably about 24 inches long you can just freehand a little triangular hat if you want if you don't want to uh, print that out or of course if you printed it out use that pattern i'm actually going to cut past the pattern a little bit about an inch okay so those of you that are gluers once that's cut out put your right sides together and you're going to glue along the two long sides nice and easy sewers you guessed it. We're going to take our hat to the sewing machine and we're going to sew along the two long sides. Again, as I always say, nice and easy. Once that's done, we're all on the same page. Everybody, I want you to turn your hat back right side out. Okay, and I left the end open, as you can see, just like I did when we did that Santa. I like to leave the end open just because, you know, we can distress it. We don't got to worry about it. So here's our hat inside out. And then I'm going to take this and just flip down about an inch or flip up, I guess, about an inch just to give it like a little kind of brim. And I'm going to leave it like that. And then I'm going to lightly, lightly stuff it because we're going to crinkle it and wrinkle it just like we did the Santa hat on the previous project. So once you get your stuffing in there, just take your glue and glue glue it down on to your head. I go about halfway down onto the head, about halfway down, getting that on there for you. And I kind of do it a little slant to make it cute. And here's where we're crinkling and wrinkling it just like we did the Santa hat. So again, you don't want a lot of stuffing in there. And I like to pin it as I glue it um, and just kind of let those pins sit there until the glue sets up for a couple of minutes. It sets up in about a minute, but you know, I like to just let it set a couple of minutes. Then I'm going to take this Distress Oxide Ink and Vintage Photo, and I've got a little finger sponge here, and I'm just going to do some shading right around that batting, all around there, and just kind of highlight the whole body. We'll do a little bit more shading later when we add a few more pieces on there, but just to give it a little bit of texture, okay? And if you don't have ink, um, you know, then don't worry about this part not a big deal. Now I've got some things here. Again, I don't know where the footage went, but I used some of that uh, twisted wire at the top of the hat, curled it on a paintbrush, and I glued it right inside that little fold-up area on the brim. And then I've just got a couple little tiny pieces of greenery here. I'm going to lay those down one kind of, you know, across ways underneath that curly wire. And then I will glue a little flat rusty star right in the center of that. Nice and easy for the hat, right? Just to give it a little something, something. Perfect. And then I've got a ripped piece of fabric here that matches the hat. You, of course, could do something a little different. And just going around the neck to make a little scarf. Okay, seeing where how far up I want it to be, where the nose is going to go. And I'm going to kind of tie it in a little knot, but then bring it down so it looks like a cute little fold there. I'm going to use these rusty ornaments, uh, snowflake ornaments I get from Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby, excuse me, in the mini ornament section. I'm going to glue in a little snowflake right inside the little knot of the scarf. Just that's a little cute. And then I'm going to go ahead and kind of glue the scarf tails down together. And I'm going to kind of wrinkle and crinkle them where I want and glue that into position. I like to do that. I like to kind of wrinkle and crinkle them and glue them so I just know they stay that way and stay super cute. Okay, now on the hat, I'm just adding a thick piece of twine here. I'm going to kind of glue that uh, twine down a little bit because it's so thick, the knot sometimes likes to slide out a little bit. And then I'm going to add a little rusty jingle bell. Well, little, it's big, a jingle bell right in the center of that knot there, just like that, just like we did on the Santa hat. And then I'm going to use these long doll needles from Walmart. They're under $2 for a five pack. I'm going to use a wood button. And then I'm going to, to go through those holes there. Make sure your needle's uh, small enough to go through those holes. And I'm going to use a quilting thread here. 
okay? And yeah, when you pick your needle, just make sure the diameter or needle fits through the holes of your buttons. And then I'm going to go from the back to the front with that long doll needle, which is why we're using a long one so that we can go all the way through. You might have to squish your doll together, pulling it back and through. You'll go, I go through about three or four times through that button and I pull it nice and tight as I'm pulling it through the holes of the button so that it kind of sinks the button into the snowman if that's understandable and then once I go through three or four times I'll kind of knot it off in the back uh, you'll see that little knot in the back but you know it'll look okay it doesn't look yucky or anything one more time through here yeah, just kind of making sure you pull it a little bit tight. And that's why we use the quilting thread because it's stronger than regular thread and it won't break on us. So you see the little knot there, but not bad. It just looks like a little tiny black knot. I'm going to use this Crayola Model Magic Air Dry Clay from uh, Walmart. I love it because the weight of it's like a marshmallow. I created a little nose, just formed that and painted it orange. And then so I know where I'm going to glue it. I'm going to use this Distress Oxide ink and worn lipstick and I'm going to add a couple of little cheeks on here you could use a regular like makeup uh, blush makeup if you want and then I'm going to glue my nose kind of right between the two cheeks just like this super cute and then I'm going to work on a little bit more decoration for the scarf I'm adding some beaded berries I get from Dollar Tree I'm going to add some little pip berries I'm going to add one beaded berry the pip berry and then another beaded berry and kind of squeeze the pit berries. How many times can I say berries? Kind of squeeze the pit berries together. And then I've got a little twine bow here. I'm going to squish it together and put it on the side of all my berries. And then on the hat, I decided to add a little wooden snowflake. You can get those at Walmart. They've got packages of wooden uh, ornaments for about four or five dollars. Here's some eyes I made out of the clay and I painted them black. I'm going to put it right up above that nose there. And then off camera, I'm going to do a little spray glitter. Here on camera, I'm going to use this adhesive and the little pumpkin spice. I wanted to show you in this one since I didn't quite show you in the last one. I sprayed the adhesive and then I kind of sprinkle the pumpkin spice on in places. And in areas where it might get near the head, you know, I don't want the pumpkin spice to get onto the white of our snowman. So I just kind of covered up a paper towel. Again, spray it with the adhesive. And then I dump a lot on here, but when I get what I want where, then I'll turn over our cute little snowman and tap off the excess. Of course, off camera, I'll use that spray glitter. And then once I do that, I love this little snowman, and I hope you like it too. Let's move on to our last project, number three. For this project, I'm using this stripe material I got from Hobby Lobby, whatever kind of material you want, of course, and it measures 18 inches long, 12 inches tall. Also, I will include a link in my description box for this free printable I made for this if you choose to use it. I think it turned out super cute. You're going to cut two of this material here, and I'm just going to turn mine uh, right sides together it's hard to tell on this fabric but we got it those of you who are gluers here's your option part one you can of course use your beacon fabri-tac or hot glue gun what you're going to do is you're going to glue along one long side one short side and the other long side leaving one short side open those of you that are sewers of course your uh, you know uh thing is going to be the same here you're going to be sewing down one long side seam allowance doesn't really matter on this quarter inch half inch down to the short side and over around to the other long side, leaving one short side open. 
Now we're going to head back to the gluers. We've been doing this for two projects already, so hopefully we've got this down today. We want to make our bottom flat. So those of you who are gluers, you're going to turn it right side out so you're on your short bottom that you sewed together. You've got your points. You're going to tuck it in and make a little recess on each end, just like that. Okay, flip it over on the other side. Going to tuck it in, make a little recess. Just like that, you're going to add your glue and you're going to press it together and your seams match up. We do this because if you don't do this, your bag's not going to sit really nice and flat, okay? So this is why we do this. You're going to sew your other little recess and push the seams together. And then you're going to turn it back so it's inside out again. And at those little points, you're going to add your glue on that triangular part each end. And you're going to fold it in and glue that together so it holds there. Perfect. Sewing option. Here's your part two. We are inside out, of course. We're going to pin it down here. I think I go about an inch and a half. Pin a little triangular section there. Flip it over. A lot easier on this when we have the points versus the snowman where they were kind of rounded, huh? But we got that snowman done. Pin down on this side about an inch and a half or so down. And you're going to just sew across above each pin here. Right? We'll get one side. And again, I like to take my pins out because, you know, they kind of get in the way. But at least at first I knew where I wanted to sew. <laughs> Just like that, right across. And then we're going to go ahead and get the other side sewn here. Because we may have new viewers. And, if you you know, I learn by seeing. So if I see it a couple of times, you know, it'll, it'll get in my brain. We're going to add glue to the triangular part above where we sewed on each side. And then... Fold it in so it meets your seam. And then, of course, like I usually do, I like to pin it down till it sets up. All right? And then we're going to set that aside. Perfect. Now we're going to go to the printable. I printed it out on fabric. I have a little cheapy $30 inkjet printing machine. I'm not going to say it works on every printer. And what I do when I, I will cut a small piece of fabric and I'll tape it all the way around onto a piece of paper and run that through my printer. And I don't mind if a little bit of the ink smears on the fabric or anything like that. I think it looks super cute. If that doesn't work for you, you can certainly print this out on cardstock and it, it would do the same thing. And then of course, as you saw me there doing, I like to just pull around the edges and distress that fabric a little bit. And now I'm just taking it to the sewing machine, add a little bit of extra touches here. I'm just going to sew around this just to give it a little bit of a country look. I'll, I'll do it uh, twice around so I've kind of got double sewing lines here. And I like how it prints on the fabric because it's not as bold, you know, but you can see here what it looks like with the sewing and then the printing, but I think it turns out cute. So everyone turn your bag right side out. Of course, we've got our bottom set up just exactly how we want them to be. And you know what we're doing next. You bet we're going to add just a tiny little stuffing at the bottom. We're going to bring in our little bag of rocks on top of that stuffing. And then we're going to stuff around those bag of rocks. And all the way up till we, you know, get about three quarters of the way up. And then I decided last minute, I want to add some lights in here. So this is whether you want to or not. I've just got some little light strands here. One with, you know, not a huge battery pack at the end. You can order these on Amazon or whatever, and I'm just going to put my lights in how I want it to be. I do it with the lights on so I can see how the lights are going to look. Then we're going to set that aside, and I'm going to use this that we got at Dollar Tree. You could use these if you want to. Um, I'm using this because it's just a little bit bigger, and I took all the garland off around it so you can see here, and you can see how the other one, it's a little smaller, is fine. And I'm going to cut it in half. I only want to use half of the candy cane. Because I want to make a little candy cane that's going to kind of tuck inside that little fabric piece. We're going to make that into kind of a little pocket. And I'm going to, once I get the cut in half, I'm going to just glue these two pieces together here with my Fabri-Tac glue so it stays together. And then I'm going to just take some of that batting and I've got a couple of little pieces here cut to cover each end. And then I'll take some big pieces here, some nice big squares and... I'll just show a little bit here, but I'm going to cover all the rest of the candy cane just using a, because I'm using little scrap pieces here, so I'm just cutting into squares, gluing it around, and I'll show you here what it looks like all the way done, just like this. Okay, so just cover it, just so you don't feel that frame, right? And then I'm ripping some fabric here, a little one inch couple of strips, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut two little pieces to cover the ends. That way that's, you don't see that batting there. 
and then I'll take that strip of fabric and I'll just start to wrap it right down near the end making sure I cover all that batting up and just kind of twist the first little bit I'll glue really good and then I'll just kind of twist and wrap for a while stopping the glue here and there see just a little bit here and there all the way up till I get to the end of the candy cane kind of coming up around all you shorter pieces I come around that curve area there because you know you kind of gotta it's easier just to wrap it a little better so it doesn't wrinkle too much when you get into that curved part just like that and then all the way down covering the batting to our end piece and here's what it looks like all super cute and then I've got another rip piece of fabric here. I was going to tie it around the candy cane, but then in a minute you'll see I'm not going to tie it around the candy cane. couple pieces of greenery here. Get that glued on. Just add a little bit of decoration to our candy cane. Perfect. And now I've made a bow and I've decided I'm going to glue it on top. It was a little bit easier to glue on top versus trying to get around that greenery. And then I'm going to add some of those beaded pit berries here, kind of right up underneath that bow at the top there of the bow. And then I've got a little twine bow here. I'm going to put on top of our fabric bow and then glue a little rusty jingle bell. Now I'm going to take this Distress Oxide ink, our vintage photo we used earlier. I'm just going to kind of ink up this little uh, pocket here, our cute little printable. The top, you can see my lights are going to hang out. They'll actually, because they're small enough, will fit inside that little upper flap. So I'm kind of gathering it about four inches down. I've got another ripped piece of muslin fabric here about an inch wide. And I'm going to add in some pom-pom trim to kind of close that off a little bit. And then I'm going to tie that muslin fabric into a little single bow here. And now I'm taking some batting. And I'm going to add it into the center of our little fabric printable there just to give it a little bit of, you know, definition, a little bit of texture, kind of raise it up off the bag a little bit. But I'm going to leave one little area here. I'm going to see where my candy cane is going to fit in there. And I'm going to leave that area around the candy cane open with no glue. You can see how I go down and around there. And then I'll add glue everywhere else. And again, you can do this with cardstock and batting. It would work too. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this glued on to our bag. And then I'm going to add glue onto the candy cane and tuck it inside that little pocket area there. So that stays glued permanently. And then I want to go ahead and wrinkle and crinkle our little fabric tails here. Because, you know, we want to be able to see our cute little free printable, right? But we still want the look of the bow there. So crinkling it around the side and the top of our printable. This is my favorite project today. I think I love this one. And then I'm going to add another wood snowflake. Again, Walmart has these packages of like four or five designs of wood snowflakes in a little like um, paper container or whatever, about $5. So I tie that snowflake on the top and then I'm going to tie a little red and white twine bow there. And these are the rusty bells I've been using today. I get them at Joann's $9.99, but half off. So worth it to me. And I'll glue that uh, twine bow down. And then I left the wire that I cut off around the bells because, you know, they have wire on them. I leave a long wire there intact on the bells so that I can wrap it around our little bow here. And then take some pliers and kind of tuck down that end after I cut off the excess so it goes right up under that bow. And I do the same on this side. I cut the bell off with some wire left on it twist it around and now you can see what it looks like here nope I don't like that we're not going to leave that wire showing so I'm going to take another piece of that ripped muslin fabric and just kind of um, fold it in half glue it and then fold the other one over and glue that so we kind of have like a single little bow here Right? We're going to make our single bow on our ripped muslin already on there into a double bow and then I'm going to wrinkle and crinkle it Right, add a little glue here. Wrinkle and crinkle our little single other single bow and glue it right into position. And now it looks like we have a cute double bow. But now we got to cover that up. So we're going to add a little bit of greenery there because you can see it's not intact with the other bow, right? Add a little bit of greenery there. On the other side, kind of tuck it into the bow, but over or into the bell, but over the bow. And once I get that done, I love this project and I hope you like it too. So I hope you like all the projects I came up with today. 
You know the drill. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite. As I said before, this one is mine. Please give my video a thumbs up. It really, really helps my channel to grow. And if you just wandered in here and you're checking things out, or maybe you came over from Wendy's channel and you're checking things out and you're digging what you saw, make sure before you click off, you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Remember, I will have the link in my description box to Wendy's video. Make sure you run, do not walk, and check out what she has in store for you today. Thank you again, sweet Wendy, for collaborating with me. You know I love you to bits and pieces. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Maybe you're thinking, God is in my life. I trust him. So why am I constantly in this pit of what is happening? I keep praying, yet I still feel I'm being held down. It's as simple as thinking and knowing that your circumstance will change. You have to know and believe and trust that God is moving all the pieces in your life to bring you freedom and healing. Don't allow the enemy to feed your thoughts with doubt. Take that doubt and give it to God. Even if you have to release that doubt 20 times a day, release it and release it again. Always, always have expectation and hope that Jesus will deliver you out of that pit you were in. It might be a long walk through that valley, but you must be absolutely committed that with the partnership of Jesus and prayer, you will reach that mountaintop. You must look forward to the finish line and see the presence of the Lord with you always, helping you, carrying you, whispering words of love to your soul. Christ will always deliver you to the freedom he has for you. Turn your thinking into a positive direction of faith and knowing that Jesus remains all in all, that Jesus cares for you, that he hears you, that he accepts you, that he will help get you what you need. Always keep knocking. Never give up, because that door will be opened, and Jesus will be standing there waiting for you. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.